In this video, we're going to look at a couple more challenging examples that involve difference of squares. Let's start with a. What we notice is we have x squared, which is the perfect square, z squared, which is the perfect square, minus 100, which is the perfect square, and y squared, which is the perfect square. So I can factor this to say xz plus 10y times xz minus 10y, and I'm done. So this one might cause a little confusion, because if we look at it, we have 9 minus x to this power of 6. And some of you might be able to, to work out that, that if x times x gives me x squared, that means that x times x times x times x times x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times x gives me x to the 6. And we can group these together to 3, which gives me x cubed, times another 3 of them, which is x cubed, which is x to the 6. So therefore, we can apply common difference of squares here to say 3, minus, 3 plus x cubed times 3 minus x cubed. And actually, a useful rule you can, you can learn is that when we look at some examples here, so x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1 is x to the 1 plus 1. We add when the, when the base is the same. We add the exponents. It gives me x squared. x squared times x squared is x to the 2 plus 2, which is x to the 4. x cubed times x cubed is x to the 3 plus 3, so we have x to the 6. And that actually continues on all the way to x to the n, where n could be any value, times x to the n, where n could be any value which gives us x to the n plus n, which is x to the 2n. And any number times 2 is always going to be even. So therefore, we can extrapolate the idea that if a power is even, then the value is a perfect square. So what we can say is x to the 2n is always equal to x to the n times x to the n. And that's what we've done here. 2 times what is 6? Well, that, the answer is 3, so x cubed and x cubed. So let's go down and look at a little bit more of a challenging problem. 16 is a perfect square minus x to the power of 24. So 24 is an even number, so I know that's a perfect square as well. So I can rewrite this as 4 plus x, and half of 24 is 12, times 4 minus x, and half of 24 is 12. So here, you might be tempted to stop, but let's make sure we go through to see what we have to look if any more factoring can happen. So we have 4, which is a perfect square, and x to the 12, and since the power is even, x to the 12 is a perfect square, but this is an addition sign. So I can't apply difference of squares here, so I simply leave it as 4 plus x to the power of 12. But this next one, I have 4, which is a perfect square, minus x to the 12, and again, 12 is even, so that is a perfect square. So I can rewrite, I can factor this second binomial to 2 plus x to the 6 times 2 minus x to the 6. And then I look again. 4 is a perfect square, but there's an addition sign here, so I can ignore that. An addition sign here, so I can ignore that. I have a subtraction, but 2 isn't a perfect square, so I'm done. A little last piece of advice. What I like to do, and what I did when I was younger and I was first learning how to apply these techniques is to avoid having to always question of whether or not something is a perfect square. When I started, on the side of my sheet, I always wrote down the perfect square. So 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 36, 49, and then just keep going up as many as you can recall. And if you keep that available to glance at, you can use that to check really quickly for your perfect squares.